NASA knows a secret about you. The U.S. government has a secret about you. The elite have a secret about you. There's a reason that black cells are literally in out of space. Your royal DNA cellular bloodline is filled with the God particle, but it lies dormant within you. Beloved, my name is Vicky Dillard. I received supernatural insight concerning your messenger DNA code from a supernatural messenger. If you're not supernatural, this isn't for you, but if it's for you, you don't want to miss my ancestral messenger DNA code activation part two on the most magical day of the year. Don't miss it. The link is below. Signs and wonders follow. Don't miss it. 12, 12, 21 is your day to ascend into your guard particle. So a brother will have a second chance at a fair trial after a Tennessee appeals court overturned his 2020 convictions. Now, Tim Gilbert was found guilty of assault, reckless endangerment, unlawful possession of a firearm and resisting arrest after a 2018 domestic incident that occurred on Christmas Eve in the spring of 2019. He was indicted in the following June convicted by an all white jury and sentenced to six years in prison. Let me, let me, let me just stop this right now. Um, these all white juries in 2021 also, cause we still having it. And to me, an all white jury doesn't mean all of them are white. That's that's 12, right? If 10 of them are on the jury, that's an all white jury to me. If nine of them and eight of them on the jury, it's an all white jury. You do you notice you never see an all black jury? Even with all the racism, white supremacy and Jim Crow, you notice they make sure to maintain the all white jury because they know they will guarantee convictions for black people with these all white juries. There has been statistics showing that even if you put one black juror on the jury, your chances uh, for you to be found innocent goes up higher with just one black person. They make sure that they can strike jurors for anything, especially black jurors. They don't have to give a reason. They can just say, Hey, I, I no, I don't want that particular juror. And you left with an all white jury. And then I've been to the time with, you know, the jury pool and I look around and it's mostly white folks. You may see a few blacks sprinkled in, maybe a few Hispanics sprinkled in a few Asians here and there but it's mostly white. Every time I went, I've never went to a jury pool and I looked around. It was never black people because they do that on purpose. They don't call black people like that. It's not that our black people are always turning them down. They got black people that want to go to jury duty sometimes just to get out of work. Some of them want to go on jury duty. Cause they say, look, I want to go and make sure I fight for the brothers and sisters in the courthouse. So then let me go ahead and do my jury duty. Cause like me, I never get picked. I never get picked for jury duty. <laughs> you know, I mean, my homeboy told me, you know, why he say, look, them people know what you're doing. They research everybody. You say, well, sure. You may not ever get on a jury. I say, well, um, I hope I would. Cause I definitely, and listen, when y'all go to these, these, uh, jury duty, don't ever say, oh, well, they ask you a question about the case. You know, Hey, do you know about this case? I don't know. No, I don't know about the case at all. I don't know anything. Is that could you do fairly? Oh yeah. I just need to hear the evidence and do that. But if you go in there saying, man, he guilty, she guilty. Shoot, man. Oh, they all know. Get rid of them. I mean, that they'll do that so quick to you. So continuing, they say Gilbert and his attorney also argued that the improperly admitted witness statement further violated his right to a fair trial. And so the issue according to Gilbert's legal team is that the jury issuing the final verdict deliberated in a room marked with Confederate symbols and memorabilia law. <laughs> oh, these people, I tell, I told y'all that is, listen, the Confederate symbols, Confederate memorabilia, all of that, that is their culture. They hold it dear to them. Y'all don't really don't understand when I keep saying the culture of white supremacy, it is their culture. You understand taking away the Confederate uh, Confederate battle flag, taking away Jefferson Davis, taking away all these people that they revere. They don't, it don't matter if they were, they were pedophiles. 
It don't matter if they were rapists, if they were murderers, it don't matter. They revere them. Okay. They really do. They revere Christopher Columbus. Understand that they understand that's part of who they are. They get that. So this is why you would see Confederates. That's why I say we cannot get a fair shake in a system of white supremacy. The best thing we can do is just be strategic. And I keep preaching this all the time to be strategic, get yourself out of those States where we, we, we too dispersed and get in areas where we can take control of the politics. For instance, you know, I'm a big advocate of Houston and Atlanta. I'm a big advocate of those two cities. Definitely. Now, if there's some other cities I need to be advocating, let me know. I'll take a visit over there and look at the landscape and maybe I'll add that to my list. But so far for me, Houston and Atlanta, uh, yes, Dallas, but Dallas, uh, they still got a lot of them folks around there too. But what I'm saying is you, we need to come to these cities. We need to take over the, the city council. When we come to these cities, we need to take over the, you know, the sheriff, the DA, we need to be the judges. Oh, so we talk about your local politics here. We need to be the County commissioner. We need to, in these cities, we need to take over everything. So when they do have these jury pools, then we know at least we know some black folks going to be there because, Hey, we are operating in, in the, uh, the system that we are kind of controlling. Understand? Like for me, I've always said that I'm not comfortable in an area where I, I don't, I can't find nobody that look like me. Nowhere. I can't find them. We have to be smart about this. This is why, especially my brothers and sisters in California, you're literally drowning in that state. You have no political representation. They purposely flooded that state with illegal immigrants, drowning out your numbers and drowning out your political um, sway in California. The, the, the cost of living is too high. Gas is too high. Y you know, do you know, and I covered this story on our other channel, the African diaspora news insider channel that more than half of the registered voters in LA County have been homeless or currently homeless because they can't afford to live. That's why I keep saying my brothers and sisters in California come out of there, come out. Those Democrats have destroyed that state. They got people of all groups that struggling over there, but you know, good and well, if white folks get a cold, you get pneumonia. You know that. So come out of that place for your own sake. Now continuing. So they said his lawyers argue that the symbols it said on that wall do nothing but embolden jurors to act on racial animus. So on December 3rd, the state's criminal appeals court ruled in favor of Gilbert's renewed pursuit of justice. It said the most visible item inside the deliberation room of the historic Pulaski courthouse is a framed Confederate flag hanging on the wall directly across from the door and well within eyesight of juries. It said other items of memorabilia included portraits of Confederate leaders, such as Confederate president Jefferson Davis and a framed letter from United daughters of the Confederates national leader. I say for several decades, the room has been maintained by the UDC. It's a female led organization that preserves historical Confederate items, provides aid for the descendants of those who served in or helped the Confederacy as well as openly opposes the removal of Confederate monuments in public places. Now, how is that even legal? That was traitorous against the United States and y'all still let them do that. But, that's their family, you know, so they, they're going to continue to allow that. Now, Pulaski is at the population of roughly 7,500 people, 74% white and 21% black. See right there, that demographic is a problem. That's a problem because when you live in somewhere that's 74% white and 21% black, and most of the black people don't live together, they spread out. Usually it's going to be a problem. Just what I'm telling y'all every single time I've done these stories, and I've seen the, 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 the play. Listen, we live in a time period that you could easily get on, uh, on the internet. You could look up the demographics real quick. 
wh who live where, what's going on. If it's middle class, upper class, you know, in between all that, listen, you can find out. And we at a point in this nation as black people, we can't be in these places like that. We need to strategically get in places where like I said, and strategically control, as I said before. Now we were all in the South. If you want to talk about our history, the South is our power base. We was the one that created the economy of the South. Understand? So when black folks left the South fleeing white supremacist terrorism, right? Now, some people that love to talk about black folks that want to go to the African continent running. Well, you know, some of y'all that's in California and some of y'all that's in Chicago and all these Northern places, if you want to talk about the running thing, I mean, just, you know, if you're saying that's a problem, well then some of the people in your family ran too. I mean, you want to go there. I deem it. They were just trying to get away from terrorism, but you know, y'all want to tell black folks today, if they want to go to the continent. Why don't you fight? Why don't you this? Why are you running and this and that? Well, you know, you got people in your family that ran from the South. If you want to go there, I'm talking about those who are saying that not people that's not saying that, but continuing. So the, they said the court's review of the article of secession and the Confederate constitution determined the presence of the Confederate flag in the room, not only defended slavery, but endorsed it fully using dehumanizing and racist language and the attempt to perpetuate the subjugation of black people. This, this is what they got in this court area, right? And you think you'll get some accurate justice in a place like that. Come on. in a white supremacist enclave, let's say the specter of racial prejudice and say that might be ascribed to the flag in the UDC room is particularly troublesome as they concluded the court in this decision and said last year, Gilbert's attempt at a new trial was denied by circuit judge Stella Hargrove. Okay. So the brother, like I say, he gets to fight, you know, another day. Now, why don't you make a law that no Confederate monuments, nothing other Confederacy could be inside of a courtroom because you know, the history, they clearly said that, the Confederacy is about maintaining white supremacy. They was open about that. It was nothing hidden about that. When you know about the uh, history of the Confederates here in America. Okay. So this is what we have still to this day, open white supremacists. And yes, these white supremacists, you know, they do this mess. Like I say in the South and like they usually the ones that do that are the real ignorant ones. I mean, most of them people are ignorant as hell. Oh my God. They're ignorant. So I always tell black folks do well for yourself, you know, stay out of trouble. I always tell you that stay out of trouble and get to a different tax bracket. When you get to a different tax bracket, you ain't got to be enduring the people. Trust me on that. But let me know in the comment section, you think about this. You just have a Confederate flag and this Confederate group of these, you know, white supremacist Karens, you know, supporting it and all of that. I'm telling you, boy, these people, like I said, they are never going to quit this folks. You gotta, you gotta get that. You gotta understand in your mind, this is the culture of white supremacy. They created so-called racism. You have to understand that this is the only thing that we can say they created and they, and they maintain that, but that's their culture. So they're never going to get rid of it. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African diaspora news channel app in the Google play and Apple app store. Colonization never ended in the white supremacist system. And as we see today, the colonization is in the mind. Now those who have been enslaved and those who have been colonized, we are still dealing with the remnants of that through the colonization of the mind. Pick up my book, seven steps to decolonize the mind. And we will help deprogram you from the colonization that was put upon you by generations and generations of white supremacy. You can pick it up today on amazon.com.